What up, those Aaron Duncan here, and I'm doing some NFL draft content. We have a prospect profile, and today's profile is on Johnny Wilson, wide receiver from the Florida State University. This guy is a freak of nature, man. This guy seems like he's made in the laboratory. He's got limbs for days. I mean, he's 6'7", 235 pounds. Just really an intriguing player for me from a matchup nightmare standpoint because he's so huge, but he has wide receiver skills. He's built like a tight end, but has wide receiver skills. I mean, he's a rare combination of traits and skills that really can make him an asset in any offense. And um, if you can carve a rollout from him, I think he can really cause some problems and be a quarterback's best friend in the league. Uh, depending on how he's deployed in the NFL, will kind of be the ceiling for him. If you want to keep him at tight or push him to tight end because you think he's too slow or if you want to keep him light, have him out there running across the middle in the slot, you can do a couple things with Johnny Wilson. I really love his size, so let's go ahead and get into it. So Johnny Wilson, he's 6'7", 235 pounds, red shirt junior out of Florida State. He started at Arizona State, did two years there, then thence transferred to Florida State in 2022. In 22, he was second team all ACC where he racked up 43 receptions. 897 yards, five touchdowns, averaging 20.9 yards per catch. A phenomenal mark at 20.9 yards per catch, man. I mean, he led the ACC with that number, and he was third in the nation with 22 20-yard receptions. That's crazy. You guys know the math how football works. A first down is only 10 yards. This guy had 22, 22 20-yard receptions in 13 games. That's crazy. That's a big play waiting to happen. Just chunk plays on chunk plays because of his size, his ability to run, his underrated uh, speed for his size, and he can really take advantage. And at the end of that year in the bowl game, the cheese it Bowl against Oklahoma, he really put himself on the map. He had over 200 yards on eight receptions, and he probably could have had more if he had caught every target that he had a chance for because he's that much of a weapon, and there's really nothing they could do with him. In 2023, he was third team all ACC, and he finished only with 41 receptions. 617 yards for two touchdowns, a little bit of a down year. He did only play 10 games this year. Missed some games for undisclosed injuries, so that was kind of weird. And, of course, he opted out of the bowl game, so he missed that game. So he only had 10 games of effort that year. But he was invited to the senior bowl, so he did enough to have a pretty solid year, and I think he's a very intriguing prospect. But real quick, if you're enjoying this draft content, you want to see more draft profiles like this, mock drafts, full breakdowns, and grades as I kind of document my process as I dive deep into the NFL draft. I'm going to be talking about what I look for when I look at film. I'm going to be showing you some film, of course. Make sure you are subscribed down below and hit that bell icon for notifications because it's draft season, y'all. So make sure you subscribe to stay up to date. So let's get into his strengths and weaknesses. My strength for him is just he has an abnormally large frame. Like, this dude has go-go gadget arms. Um, he's built like, I don't know, I feel like he's a knuckle dragger. His, his hands could, could drag on the ground and him just standing straight up. That's how big his frame is. And, I mean, I think he's a very quarterback-friendly target because he knows and understands zone coverage and understands how to change his pace up, understands windows and zone coverage, and being that big across the middle, an easy target for a quarterback when you can put it up high and he can take advantage and go up and climb the ladder and still go get it. And being able to do both of those, I think that makes him an asset, whether he's playing tight end or playing uh, wide receiver, wherever you want to put him at. Um, and another strength for him, I think he has very underrated long speed. He's probably not going to test anything crazy. If he goes sub 4-6, um, I think he'll probably jet up into a early day two pick. I project him now to be uh, probably later day two, depending on what, what, what kind of run we're looking at on wide receivers this year. But if he tests anywhere below 4-6, look out for this guy. But I expect him to be in the mid 4-6, low to 4-6 ranges, which is still fine. But I think his stride really is underrated. And when you play off coverage from him against cornerbacks, they kind of underestimate how fast he is. He really gets on top of them pretty fast. And with his size and speed combination, when he eats up that airspace, it can be overwhelming from defensive backs. Uh, the weaknesses, he lacks a lot of twitch and uh, suddenness um, overall. But for a guy his size, he can stick his foot in the ground, make certain cuts in terms of out routes and uh, going to breaking in routes as well. And he's also fairly shifty in the asset um, after the catch because he's just so big and hard to tackle. He's not going to make anybody miss as far as just juking them, but he definitely can make sharp cuts and take advantage of open space um, and green grass there. Uh, routine drops is another weakness. Um, this guy, for every good catch he makes where he goes up and climbs the ladder or makes a spectacular catch, he can have some mind-numbing drops where he'll just leave meat on the bones. I talked about that cheese it game where he had 200 yards. He probably could have had easily 250, maybe 275 if he caught all those passes. I'll show you on the film that 
he had an inexplicable drop that was just horrible. That would have been another big chunk play for his offense, but he just has some routine drops ever so often. And if he's going to be playing tight end or being across the middle, you need to be able to make those secure catches because, you know, when you go across the middle, if you tip passes across the middle, typically end up in interception. So you want to have a guy like this is going to be across the middle to have a little bit more sure hands. But like I said, they're more concentration drops than him just not fundamentally understanding how to catch passes. So something that can really be worked on and honed later on down the line. But uh, the last but not least, his footwork versus physical coverage. He may get pressed ever so often by corners and he's so big that he really can't get low and he's not that shifty like I said. So you know, a physical corner can get up underneath them and make things happen. They can also run with them if they want to play and use that length game. He's not overly physical from that point all the time. And he doesn't really use that speed and that length to take advantage every, all the time when it comes to press. But I want to see him work on his release packages there. Um, maybe try to get a little bit more quickness there. But I think versus off coverage or any kind of catch press or soft press, he can destroy that. But I will expect defenders try to get a little bit more physical with him in the NFL until he figures out how to really either add some weight when he's playing tight end and get a little bit more uh, out tools in the chamber as far as getting off press coverage. But we will see. My pro comp for him is if you want to play him at tight end, I've heard and seen a little bit of Darren Waller, and I can understand that just because he's like a gazelle running down the field and he, he's still raw, but he definitely is an athlete that's a mismatch for DBs, but he's also too athletic for his uh, linebacker. So I like that. But I also see myself a little bit of Kelvin Benjamin and Plaxico Burris, just because his ability to get down the field, his ability to attack the ball in the air, the ability to catch back shoulder fades in the red zone, just that red zone ability. I really like Johnny Wilson's game. He just needs to clean up those drops. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the film. All right, so let's check out this cheesy ball, his career game I told you about. Watch him against off coverage. He's gonna really eat this up and watch this frame going across the middle. The ball's thrown high, he's able to extend then full extension, good concentration there to go up and beat. Like I said, he's an asset for a quarterback across the middle. Anytime you're that big and the quarterback can throw that high, boom, you can go up and climb that ladder. Man, it's it's, it's nice to see this. Watch it one more time because we're at 6'7", you throwing it this high to 6'7", he can go above the rim and go get that ball whenever he needs to. Like I said, a quarterback best friend in this type of scenario when he does these things. Next up, here's 2023 against Clemson. He's going to be at the top of the screen. He's going to get a little bit of off coverage. Like I said, against his off coverage when he has a free release and you don't get physical right away, he's going to take advantage. And this is one of those few times where he does play bully ball and plays to his size and really, really gets away with it. Stems inside, gives a little head fake. But pushes off, but gets away with it on that through that contact. That's what you want to do when you have a smaller corner or a smaller defender against you. Look at this up top. Boom! Give a little bit of fin. Don't fully extend, but lean on him. Use that stem. Like I like the way, even though he's a bigger guy, he can stem inside. The stem inside those first couple steps inside to get position, and then after he gets in, in position, squares him up. And look at that guy. Knocks him off balance. Boom. Puts the ball right on his numbers. He's able to take advantage and catch that pass. Let's watch it from this view one more time. Stems inside, squares him up, gives him a little bit of shimmy at the top of the route. Watch that flipper. I call it a flipper. They didn't push it off. It's a flipper. And he did fully extend that arm, but uh, maybe the NFL, they call it. Maybe they don't. Boom. Still puts it across the middle right on time on his chest. Asset across the middle. I want to see him be a little bit more physical like this more consistently. And this is what he'll need to do if he'll ever play tight end because they're going to chuck him off the line of scrimmage all the time just to disrupt the timing with him and the quarterback. But I still think Johnny Wilson has shown that ability to be physical. You just got to be more consistent with it. Back to the bowl game here. I'm telling you about that off coverage. I'm telling you his speed is underrated here. And watch how he closes this airspace. He's able to get on top of the DB so fast. He turns the DB around with the head fake. He has some nuances to his game that lets you know that he's not an automatic, let's just put him at tight end type of guy because he shows these wide receiver skills. But obviously, this is one of those things I was telling you about those concentration drops. He closes that airspace, gets on top of the, turns that corner around. Great route getting behind the defense. Can't complete the play. This is a layup. You got to take advantage of these plays in the NFL. You don't get shot plays like this very often. And when you get a guy this tall behind the defense, it's a great ball by Jordan Travis. Puts it right on him. Concentration drop. But again, look how he closes his airspace, how fast he does that. Boom. He's already on top of the guy 10 yards downfield. He's closed that eight, 10 yard cushion down to about three. Turns the DB around as he open, makes him open his hips. And look, this little swim move right here to get this guy spinning. He's able to get up field to get behind the defense. Like I said, she should have had 250 this game. Ended up having 200. 
he could have had 250 maybe 275 if he takes this all the way this is just something sometimes that happens with johnny wilson because of those concentration drops he will need to clean this up but i'm very intrigued by johnny wilson like i said whether he plays tight end or wide receiver give him a chance it, it probably depends on how he runs how he looks at the senior ball will have to do a lot with where he projects in the nfl but i think you can give him a chance to either be a detached tight end that plays on the outside a lot or you can pay, have a wide receiver that plays in the slot that goes against some nickels some linebackers some safeties and he could be an asset that across the middle as a huge target running the seam or even just running those deep crossers because he clearly has a stride and like I said the underrated speed to be able to stretch the defense whether horizontally or vert horizontally or vertically I really like Johnny Wilson you guys let me know down below in the comments what do you think about Johnny Wilson man I really I really am intrigued about it but I want to get you guys thoughts I really appreciate you guys watching make sure you hit that subscribe button down below for more draft content for the NFL and of course for the Carolina Panthers I'll see you next time Peace.